Hello students, this is Ashani from Chinta.com. In this video, I want to talk to you about research in school. Uh, in 2024 and 2025, we had quite a few beautiful research projects at Chinta. Students from various parts of the world, India, Singapore, US, UK, they participated in these projects. And then some of those projects ended up being a paper a research paper that is published in some journal. You can see some links in the description for examples. Some of them participated in the science fairs. Science fairs are very prestigious contests and we have multiple successes in the science fairs uh, from students in US, from India and so on. So these are the two main directions in which research projects in school can go research papers and science fair projects that lead to science fair awards. Now, if you are interested in research, then this particular video is for you. The way we approach this in Chinta is like this. We ask the students to start with Olympia training for at least six months to one year. The reason is this. If you start training for mathematical olympiads or physics olympiad or computer science olympiad, then your mind gets prepared to solve difficult problems. And the more important part is this. It learns how to be patient. These olympiads problems are actually quite challenging. Sometimes they require days, weeks, even months to get solved. Our students learn how to be persistent and how to revisit a problem over and over again, learn new techniques while doing that. This is a very important skill that can culminate into our research skill as well. That's the first step, is six months to one year of training in rigorous mathematical science Olympiads. Could be physics Olympiad, could be computer science Olympiad. Now, once you are done with that, your mind is sort of fertile. It's ready to work with new problems. Then you can go into either applied mathematics or pure mathematics if you're working with Chinta. The way we do this is like this. We usually start with a short but very focused training process. It depends from what cohort we are working with, but this training process may involve machine learning, may involve statistical analysis, may involve group theory or some other part of PR mathematics. It really depends on what research questions we have in mind for that particular cohort. Usually a cohort works for around six to seven months. First two to three months is for the training. The remaining three to four months is devoted to pursue the research questions that our advisors usually coin. You can see plenty of examples of research problems that our students have tackled in the past. A very interesting problem involved elliptic curve cryptography. It was done by, I think, Shorodeep and one other author was there as well. You can check the link in the description for their presentation. This is a part of applied mathematics they used elliptic curves to a very powerful place in applied sciences called cryptography. It's very interesting. Another project in which Prisha worked used graph theory in urban planning. This particular project actually won a medal in one of the science fairs. You can check the link in the description for an example. Another project worked with lung cancer detections using machine learning models. A similar project was done by Rushil, who also won a science fair award. Pure mathematics, if you are interested in that, you can check out the work by Siddhant Shah or um, Anika Chopra, which involves hyperbolic geometry. They ended up publishing papers. Uh, Siddhant had a recent publication which utilized hyperbolic geometry to analyze a classical problem from Euclidean geometry. There are multiple directions in which you can go. This is the great thing about research. Once you have a training, a baseline training, 
you can take that training to work on different directions and usually the research problems these are the tricky ones the research problems they are coined by the advisor sachinta so you really don't have to worry about what problem you would want to pursue now many times students ask me this question that okay i'm a high school student how much complicated problem can i hope to solve with this limited amount of time and you are right you are you won't be able to probably you won't be able to solve any breakthrough problem though in rare situations students do that after years of work but usually what we suggest is something known as low hanging fruit so let me explain what a low hanging fruit is a low hanging fruit is a simple to tackle problem that is not yet solved just because no one really took the time to solve it it still requires you to learn quite a few new things it requires you to think creatively and rigorously but it's a low hanging fruit means it's a solvable problem uh so one of the main job of the research advising team at chinta is to actually make a list of such problems twice every year so we have about 20 to 25 problems for each cohort for summer and winter cohort and once the training is done the training is actually set up in that way so that the students can tackle those problems now let me finish this video with the final set of research projects that students often do these are related to real life projects or real life businesses i'll give you an example there is a small business called alunkrita in Chid, uh, that we are working with uh, which works on um, embroidery and other handicrafts in india so a few students are also working in this particular project so they are brainstorming and they are thinking about how to create better products how to create better marketing for this particular company now while doing that a few faculty members at chinta have gotten involved into something known as the data science for aesthetics so what it means really is this in different regions of india different color palettes will be more appealing to the customer a detailed study of those color palettes based on real big data is a very interesting and applied research project this project has a direct application in the business because once they are able to identify color palettes which are uh, more preferred by customers in a specific location products can be designed using those color palettes and hopefully they would sell more these type of research projects are known as industrial research or business research these are also uh, used by students such as that so i think you have gotten a very broad but very precise uh, understanding about the scope of research at chinta i hope you get involved in it because it's a lot of fun thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next one